Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I will start with a question. Whom of you came by plane to Berlin? Please raise your hand. Well, I avoid my second question. Do you feel guilty? Because I assume, actually, if you could do this carbon neutral, you would be very pleased. ETH invests a lot in mobility because our scientists want to meet in person also in the future. And as we've seen from some of the other ideas, we have to keep mobility alive. Three years ago, we got confronted with an idea. We take CO2 from the air, we take water, and we take sunlight to produce kerosene. And the person pitched and showed me this bottle. 0.04 efficiency, percent efficiency. Three years later, we have 7% efficiency in this process, and all other details will be presented by Philip Fuller, CTO of Senelio. Breaking the wall to clean fuels on a global scale. Philip Fuller, Sinhelion. Thank you very much, Detlef. Good afternoon, everybody. At Sunilion, we turn CO2, water, and sunlight into clean synthetic fuels. We believe that liquid hydrocarbons such as kerosene or diesel or methanol are here to stay, and let me explain you why. This small bottle here contains kerosene, jet fuel. If you want to have the same amount of energy with a state-of-the-art lithium-ion battery, you would need this volume, and even more if you compare it by mass, roughly 30 to 80 times as much. This is the reason why long-haul flights are not possible with batteries. They're simply far too heavy. Additionally, hydrocarbons can store energy for a very long time, can be transported with can be transported and used with the current existing global fuel infrastructure. So it's our mission at Sinelion to replace fossil fuels on a very large scale by clean synthetic fuels which have substantially lower or even no net CO2 emissions. Existing technologies to produce such fuels, for example, from biomass, are limited in their scalability potential because they use agricultural land and therefore compete with food production at large scale. On the other hand, approaches based on electricity are very expensive and would require high CO2 tax or other support schemes to become economically viable. In contrast, our approach is scalable to meet global fuel demands and at the same time substantially cheaper than technologies based on electrolysis. What you see here is a commercial solar power plant in Israel. It produces electricity for around 20,000 households. The large mirror field reflects the incident sunlight to the top of the tower where the radiation is absorbed and converted into high temperature process heat, which then drives a steam turbine cycle to produce electricity. Now for solar fuels production, we use the same commercial infrastructure to concentrate the sunlight, but instead of producing electricity, we use the high temperature solar process heat to drive energy intensive chemical reactions to split water and CO2 into syngas, a mixture of hydrogen and CO, which is then further processed to the liquid hydrocarbons such as gasoline, diesel, kerosene or methanol. If we capture CO2 from the air, we can close the carbon cycle and produce CO2 neutral fuels because the same amount of CO2 was extracted from the air and used for the production as is released during the combustion of the fuel. This thermochemical route involves a minimum of conversion steps and can therefore be more efficient and cheaper than competing technologies. We have recently demonstrated our most radical approach for producing liquid fuels by just two ingredients, air and sunlight. And we built a small demo plant on the roof of ETH Zurich, which captures water and CO2 from atmospheric air. Then the, the water and CO2 are split into syngas in solar reactors, and subsequently the syngas is uh, liquefied to methanol, CO2-neutral Methanol and methanol is just an example. We could also produce kerosene or any other liquid hydrocarbon. 
Now here is a short overview of our roadmap. Currently we are in the pilot phase where we tested the system, the components of our next generation system at a 200 kilowatt scale. This is about 40 times larger than what we did at ETH. Next year we'll scale up to the megawatt size and test the system on solar towers and by 2022 we go to the full commercial size of 20 megawatts and build the first demo plant with a fuel capacity of around 20,000 liters of methanol per day. To give you an impression about the current phase, we are at this moment testing uh, one of our core components at the German Aerospace Center here in Germany, in Jülich. This is a device which produces <coughs> ultra-high temperature process heat, so up to 1,500 degrees for the chemical reactions. And you see the device glowing after the testing. Thank you very much.